but we'll go through step by step. If I can get the clicker from the end, we'll start in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Servant leader. By the way, I want you to pay attention to this. If somebody can tell me what this thing means later on, then you get a gift. But it looks like a jar, right? But we'll figure out what that means. But just pay attention and we'll see what that means. So, servant leader. Here's the thing. There are so many talks and so many books about being a leader. But the true leader is what we call a servant leader. I'm going to explain what that means today. Because it's easy to be a leader, and we've been talking, all those who have been in the leadership conference this week, we've been talking about leadership in so many ways. And you've learned a lot in like four days. This is the fifth day for us. But we haven't really spoken about this topic. Servant leadership. Servant leadership. Servant leadership is, our Lord is definitely the number one example when He did what to His disciples? Perfect. He washed the disciples' feet. Something unheard of, some unthinkable, that the God of the universe can come down and wash the people's feet, his, his disciples' feet. And that's the true status or level of what it means to be a servant leader. Usually when you think of leader, what do you think? The what? The boss. The big guy. He's the one in control. But that's not what I want to talk about today. The true servant leader... I'm going to give you four things today to explain to you what does it really mean to be a servant leader. To help you out, let me give you an example. When you go to a restaurant, and this is, I've done this before, so forgive me for this. When I go to a restaurant, let me speak of myself. When I go to a restaurant to eat, I have high expectations for the waiter. You guys know who the waiter is? The waiter comes around, right? I don't know what it is, it's my sin, but I have high expectations for the waiter. You know, usually at the restaurant, we always want something to be on the table there. What do you want? Not even salt, before that. Not even the menu. Something always there to eat. Always first, as you're waiting for the other stuff. Water and bread. You guys ever go to a restaurant and there's bread on the table? I love the bread. So, the first thing I do when I go to a restaurant, is to eat some water, please. And please, can you make sure the bread is there? After five minutes, what happens? The man didn't bring anything. I start to get upset. I'm telling you, forgive me for this example because it's true. And Daya can tell you. As the guy comes, I say, excuse me, sir, can, can, can you bring the bread? And he goes, oh, I'm coming right now. Five more minutes. Sir, I told you about the bread five minutes ago. Can you bring the bread? And the waters. Look, and by the way, my kids are crying. Can you bring something for them to color? Because they're, they're making loud noise. Can you, can you help me to keep these kids quiet? Four minutes. Sir, and I start shouting now. And I start getting angry. And the, and the waiter does what? Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. He goes and he finally gets the bread. And finally gets the water and the coloring. And everything's okay. Who's the waiter in the story? Who's the waiter in the story? Think clearly. It's us. We're the waiter. And you could get abused sometimes. And it could be hard sometimes. But the waiter is the one who's serving the people and giving what he can. And sometimes people have high expectations of us. And sometimes people are not great with us. But the servant is the one like the waiter serving the people who are in need. We are the waiter. We are the waiter. I want us to open up Colossians chapter 1. This is our, our verses for today. Colossians chapter 1 from 24 to 29. Colossians chapter 1, 24 to 29. We are like Jesus, the one washing the feet. We are like the waiter, the one serving the people in their needs. And the people around you may love you, may not. But we must keep serving and serving them as a waiter, as a servant of the Lord. Colossians chapter 1, from verse 24 to 29. Let me read quickly. Are you with me? Colossians, write it down. Colossians chapter 1, 24 to 29. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. This is St. Paul. 
I now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. What is St. Paul saying so far? I'm going to sacrifice for and be afflicted and be hurt or be whatever for the sake of the West, the church. 25. Of which I became a minister. What's a minister? The servant. Which I became a minister according to the stewardship from which God was given to me for you. Who gave St. Paul this calling to be a servant? God himself. It's clear here in verse 25. To fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Now look, it gets better. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles. We are now serving to give the mysteries of God, the richness of God to the people, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Look at 28. Him. Who is him? God. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. This is saying, as servant leaders, we have to be afflicted or we have to have uncomfortable suffering to bring the God's blessing and mystery and hope to the people. Our goal is the people, to do whatever it takes for the people, to present them perfect. That's what it means to be a servant leader. So number one point is, how do I go back? Can you go back one slide? Thank you, Andrew. The first question I want you to write down is, are, are we willing to be a to pay the price to be servant leaders? Are we willing to pay the price to be a servant leader? And what's the price? Look at verse 24. What's the price to be a servant? Could be suffering, could be challenges, could be uncomfortable. It could be that I have to give my time for the service. I have to give my precious time to the service. And not just that, why? Because for the sake of the body, which is the church. The question for you, and write it down. Are you willing to pay the price? Serving the Lord, to be a servant leader, it's not easy. Jesus himself, to bow down and wash the feet of his disciples, to go on the cross and die for his people, and to suffer the way he did. And St. Paul also, I'm going to talk about St. Paul, the way he would suffer for the sake of God. And we have any little agitation or any little problem, we can't serve God. Any small thing happened to us, no, I can't. Servant leader has to be willing to pay the price in order to save souls, to care for the body, which is the church. So the first question we ask ourselves, are we willing? Now we know the most famous, I know it's very small, but you can open up in your own Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 23-28. Once again, my favorite section about a man who suffered for the sake of the church. Can we open together? I'm going to read it, but I want you to follow and I want you to keep this verse next to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. <clears throat> chapter 11, verse 23 says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, and labor is more abundant. Look at St. Paul in his service. I want you to write down... Which one stands out to you? In labor is more abundant. In stripes above measure. Stripes is like whippings. In prisons more frequently. In deaths often. He died a few times, yep. Yeah? He came <laughs> From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In journeys often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers and perils of my own countrymen, and perils of the Gentiles, and perils in the city, and perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false brethren. In weariness, you get tired, and toil, right? Look, St. Paul's getting tired for, for the Lord. We don't want to get tired for the Lord. In weariness, and toil, in sleeplessness often, no sleep, hunger, and thirst, even getting hungry, fastings often, cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. My deep concern for all the churches. 
Are you willing to pay the price? St. Paul paid the price. Look guys, servant leader, service is not easy. It's so easy to put God last and to put service last. On Sunday morning, we barely feel like getting to church. Isn't that true? God needs you there to find a way to help others. And not just on Sunday morning, but throughout the week in your precious time, when you have no time. It's how to serve like that. If this man can go through death and fasting and beatings and shipwreck and hunger and all those things, the small things that we can do to, for others, that's what it means to be a servant leader. But you have to be willing to pay the price. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable. You have to be willing to give up your time. And me too. I like sleep. And I would rather sleep. <laughs> but now I have to lose sleep for the sake of others. I always tell you the story. I know the fathers have the same, some similar stories. But, you know, honestly, between me and you, but don't tell the bishop, it's recording, isn't it? <laughs> don't give us recording vision. I don't like to go to Congo. It's hard. It's really hard. But you know why I go? Not for the bishop. For the souls that I see there that are in great need. That's what it's about. We go to a place, I always talk about Mesquica. Mesquica is not just in Congo, it's in, it's, it's in another planet. It's not on Earth. Mesquica is a place not on this Earth. You go and you drive in the middle of nowhere and there's no roads and there's nothing. And you're just going through hoping that you can arrive to a location. And you get there. And to get there, you have to beat up your body is beaten. You feel sick. You feel terrible. And when you get there, you're going to get more sick. And you come back with sickness for a couple months, sickness here. But, is it worth it? It's worth it. It's worth it. To see the people there, how happy they are, how joyous they are, how hungry they are for God. Sometimes we have to suffer. Sometimes we have to be uncomfortable. Sometimes we have to go out of our way for people. That's the servant leader. A leader in the world doesn't have to do those things. A servant leader like you and me, we have to go out of our way for people. There's no status. By the way, servant leader, there's no levels. We're all down. For all of us. There's no high or low. We're all down. As Christ was down, washing the feet. It is hard. But all of us have to be willing. What's number one? Be willing to... Pay the price. What's number one? Be willing to pay the price. John 15, verse 20. Let's say it together, because my voice is kind of going in and out. John 15, verse 20, all together. I said to you, Who paid the price? If he paid the price and we're his servants, what should we do? We should also pay the price. He paid the ultimate price. We belong to him. We're servants for him. I gotta be willing to pay the price. A servant leader is willing to do that. John 15, verse 20. Here's the thing. A servant leader in the summary is someone willing to make someone else's life easier. That the mentality of a servant leader is that I would use my life and my and I would take away from my comfort, I would take away from my time to make someone's life easier. To make someone else's life grow and be blessed. So I would like burn my body and burn and, and like struggle and 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 pray and sweat for the sake of someone to be up. I would be down for the sake of someone to be up. That's the servant leader. Does that make sense? But sometimes, I want you to think of situations. This could be, by the way, in your home. You might have to be a servant leader in your home. You might have to be a servant leader in your church, in your community, in your work, in your soul. Sometimes we have to, to do that. I'll give you an example. I know it's, a, it's not really a, a, it's a funny example. It's not really a funny example, but... You're on the bus, or you're on the train, or whatever, and a person comes in the bus, 
and you have a good speech. No more speech left. What do you do? You're on the bus, or the train, or whatever, wherever you're at. You're on there, you have a seat, a good seat, it's a long journey. This is the best seat, thank God. Long journey. Someone comes in the bus, and they look around, and they look at your eye, and they look around. <laughs> and you try to look down, right? That's what I do. <clears throat> like that. You look down. What do you do? What do you really do? Do you get up? A servant leader's heart not only gets up, jumps up. Yeah. A servant leader jumps up and says, hey, hey, hey. But me, I'm like, <coughs> excuse me, not feeling well today. Uh, you know, you, we make stories like we're sick or something. That's the servant leader. One who is ready to jump up and make sure someone has a better way, has a better life. I know it's sad because every one of us wants our life to be blessed and our life to be the best. But to do that, you're going to have to think of others. And that moves us to number two. So what's the first one? Are you the Christ? Number two, we have to have the mind of Christ to be a servant leader. We have to have the mind of Christ to be a servant leader. The best chapter in the Bible to have a mind of Christ is Philippians chapter 2. From 1 to 5. Write it down. Philippians chapter 2 from 1 to 5. What's the mind of Christ? First I have to pay the price. Then I have to have the mind of Christ. What is all this? Okay, so let's, let's look together. Philippians 2. You can open your Bibles or you can follow along. Whichever. It says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Here it is, verse 3, pay attention. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others. Others how? What does the next one say? Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but for who? But also for the interest of others. Verse 5, here it is. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Christ. This is the mind of Christ. This, these verses is what the mind of Christ, this is his way. He's the true servant leader. He paid the price, but he also esteemed others. From verse 3, others better than himself. Better than yourself. And your interests are important, but not as important as the interests of others. Now ask yourself this question, whose interests do you care about the most? Whose interests do you care about the most? If you have your own interests, number one, you're not a servant leader yet. You will be. We have to move from my interests being number one to others' interests being number one. Now you're probably thinking, well, how does that work, Kabuna? Like, I have to take care of my family, I have to take care of... I always tell you this, and you never believe me, but when you take care of the interests of others, God takes care of your interests. Can you write that down? When you take care of the interests of others, God takes care of your and your family's interests. When you take care of your own interests, and God is far away, God is far away, our interests can't be number one. This is the mind of Christ. This is what it means to be a servant leader. It's not just about you and your family, you and your family, you and your family. Yes, you and your family are important, but God has your family's interests ready to go. Don't worry. Don't worry. But my question is, how? Let's pray today that we have the mind of Christ, that we move towards not selfish ambition, but putting others higher. Hey, your Sunday school class that you teach, are they higher than yours? Interests? The people you serve, are they higher than you? You give them time. Are you paying the price for them? Are you going out of your way for them? I don't know. I'm guilty. I feel guilty for that. But the goal today is not to feel guilty, but it's to pray how to be a real servant leader. You can be a leader. And there's many leaders in this world. We don't need leaders. We need servant leaders. Servant leaders are the strongest leaders 
in the world. The ones who pay the price, like St. Paul, 2 Corinthians 11. Read through that again from 23. Hear the mind of Christ. Sorry, can you put that back in? I don't know what button I pushed here. <laughs> Let's put it back to the same slide there on the left. So the next set of verses I want you to read is open up Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Mark 10, verse 45. Oh, this is cool. I'm playing a game here. I need to this one. Can you click on the middle one there, Andrew? Mark 10. Yeah, push enter now. Yeah, look at that. Good job. Okay, Mark 10, 45. Let's read together. This is again the mind of Christ. Let's read together. Four. All together. Four. This is both one and two together. What was one? Who remembers number one was what? Say together. Are you? And to pay the price. Number two is what? Mind of Christ. They're both here. Son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. The mind of Christ is to serve, not to be served. That's the mind of Christ. To give, to give, to serve, to put others first. Hey, you need that seat? Take that seat. You need this apple? Take this apple. You need something? How can I help you? How can I? What? The mind of Christ is always looking for chances to give and to serve. That's the mind of Christ. Ransom? That's paying the price. Paying the price. Shut this window here. Shut the window. Shut the window. Shut the window. Shut the window. Okay? You with me? All right, here's another. Just loud up. Any windows open? Okay. All right. I want to give you a comparison now. And I want you to see where you fit. I'm going to give you a comparison from a leader of the world and a servant leader. A normal leader and a servant leader. And I want you to find out where you fit. Okay? Here it is. I know it's kind of small, but I want you to write these down. See, here's the difference. Okay, on the left is which one? Huh? This is a normal leader. On the right is what? The servant leader. You see it? I'm gonna, I want you guys to see this for a second. Okay? On the left is what? He's a normal leader. He has those things. He has what? Let's go through them. Number one is what? Power. Power. Yeah. You always think the best leaders in the world have what? Power. This is how it should be. And this is what I said. And listen to whatever I say. And this is how it's going to be. What? Okay. What? Influence. I can tell you what. Make things happen. No nonsense. No regret. Tough down. You serve me. Hey, that's most leaders in this world. Not us. We're on the right. Let's read them together. Number one is what? Compassion. Number two. Humility. Go ahead. Oh. Where do you fit in this one? Which one do you like from there? Which one? Are you back and forth? No, I have that one too. I have that one. I'm both of winner. I'm the greatest. I'm both. I'm both. No. I can't be both. Either here or here. Look. I've made this mistake so many times. And actually, I want to confess something in front of my fathers here. I've done numbers, the left side, to my fathers and the deacons so many times in my 12 years here. So many times. So I want your forgiveness for that. I've done that before. I pushed my way and said, this is how it's going to be. But I learned, by the way, from the fathers here, the right one. They treat me with compassion, humility, gentleness, generosity, faith, all the best. This is our priest here. Can we clap for them? This is our priest here. Now. So I learned that. Because coming from America, you know, Donald Trump and everybody that side, you know, we're, we're on the left over here. <laughs> and that's, that's hard. But when I came here in Zambia, I started to learn the right one. I want to keep that thing. I want us to always be on this right side. Okay? I want us always to be compassionate and humble and gentle and generous and patient. And it's not that I'm on the top, I'm on the bottom. And I serve, I need you. What do you need? I serve you. This one on the left doesn't work. We might be scared of that person. We might obey that person. But it doesn't work. It will not save me. She will not save me. So we have to be this way. Write down a few things right now 
that you want to stop from the list on the left. And write down a few on the right that you want to start on the right. Just take like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Say, God, help me to stop that thing on the left. And God, I want this one specifically on the right. Help me with that one. Mine is gentleness. I'm praying for that. I'm not gentle. I'm praying for gentleness. You find out where you are. Okay, take like 10 seconds, write down. This is what a servant leader looks like on the right. He does pay the price. He has the mind of Christ. We're on the bottom, and we put others first. And those are the characteristics we need. We have to be careful as servants. Sometimes as servants, we think we're the boss. Sometimes as leaders, we think we're the boss. We're not the boss. We're here to, to wash feet of the people. This is what it means. All right. Take another five seconds, and we'll start. Okay, let me tell you a story. There's a story one time of a corporal. You know, a corporal in the army is one of those, like a captain in the army. The captain in the army, he was telling his private, his team, the barricade is down. The barricade is like a place where you, like, you know, when you need to hide from the enemy, the barricade. So, he was in the, the corporal or the captain in the middle of said, hey guys, quickly, quickly, fix the barricade. Pick up the stone there. Go over there. Hey, you, go over there. And he was shouting at all his team to get the barricade up because the, the enemy was coming. Are you with me? So here comes the guy on the horse. This is back in the old days. There was no cars. This is a true story, by the way. Here comes the guy on the horse. He looks at the captain. He says, Captain, what are you doing? What's, what's going on here? See, the barricade's down. I'm telling my people, I'm commanding my people to, to build the barricade because the enemy's coming. He said, oh, okay. The man gets off the horse. What does he do? He goes over to the barricade and starts helping the people. Right? But he helps the team fix the barricade. He comes back, the guy on the horse, comes back to the, com the captain. And the captain asks him, who are you? you? You came from a horse and you're helping my team. Who are you? He said, I'm the commander-in-chief, George Washington, first president of the United States of America. Captain started crying. It's a true story. He said, why did you get off your horse and go and help the people? He said, because I'm the leader. And that's what a leader does. He gets down and he helps people. You are not a leader. You're barking on orders for them to do it. You should be with them doing it. Do you see the difference between a worldly leader and a servant leader? Who sees the difference? A worldly leader is what? The boss. Tells you what to do. A servant leader goes where? Inside. And he starts helping. Should the President of the United States of America be helping people to build a barricade? No. But he did anyway. That's a true leader. Get down on your knees. Get down and help where it's dirty, where it's needed. That's the servant leader. Don't do all the big things up here and say, I'm part of the big things and the big tasks and all these things. No. Go down. Like the commander in chief. George Washington, first president of the United States of America, did. I'm praying I could be more like that kind of leader. What's number one? Are you? Number two? Number three? See the big picture. Write that down. See the big picture. Servant leader can see the goal. Sometimes as leaders, we lose the goal, the big picture. Let me give you a few verses. Number one verse from Colossians. We said this verse already, but we'll, we'll take a look at it again. Colossians chapter 1, 28 says, let's take it together. Him, we, all together. Him, we 
What's the big picture? Who can answer? Here's a little gift here. This, this one says, I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the big picture here? Who can tell me? Hmm. Tasha. Two? To okay. To reach Jesus Christ? Okay, I can't, I can't say that's wrong, so come and get this, but looking for something else. I can't say that's wrong. All right, let's start for him. All right. Uh, yeah, so what's the mission? Okay, let me get, uh, the stuff I'm looking for, but I like it too. So it's time for Dr. Diego. I can't say it wrong, so let's start from the girl side. Yes. Go, go in Jesus, preach to all the world and preach okay. to all people. Preach to all people? That's not wrong, but it's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Give her a big hand. That's the one I want. <laughs> you guys get that? Yes. Look, that's the servant leader. He knows the big picture. He knows the goal. The goal is what? Every person has to be in Jesus. Every person I serve, my children, are your children in Christ? Is your brother and sister? Is your parents? Is your is your church? Is your whatever? Is hey? Is all the people at work? The people you work with are they are they there? I said, no, 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 it's not my business. It's not my business. I don't know. It is your business. It is your business. Every person. It says every man, right? You know what every man means? Every man and woman. Mankind. That's how they wrote the Bible. So every man and woman is our responsibility. Our big picture as a servant leader is every person has to be in Jesus. And it's perfect. It's growing. Anyone you serve, anyone around you, that's your mission. Pay the price. Mind of Christ. Put others higher. Number three, yeah, big picture. What's the real goal? That every person is perfect. Every person is perfect. No matter what they're doing wrong now, no matter what mistakes they're making now, your, your job is to take a step to help them. Your life is for their life. I know that, that's a hard deal. That's not a good deal, is it? Your life is for their life. But not just to make their life better financially, but this way is that everyone will be perfect in Christ. That's our big picture. Sometimes we lose that goal. Sometimes we lose that goal. Even this verse in Philippians, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice, yes, I rejoice. This means that maybe people have the wrong intentions. Maybe people around you are, are not doing it like they're not good. And they might even talk about they might even talk about God. But all St. Paul cared about is that God is talked about. Do you guys get that? Like that's important that Hey, it doesn't matter what people are doing. It matters just that we bring up God and His name and, and, and make sure people know Him. Make sure people know Him. Okay? So a new approach is needed here. A new approach is needed. A new approach, a new approach is needed. Before I talk about the new approach, I want to say something about this. I want us to stop something in the church and stop something in our community. Stop judging and criticizing others around you for what they're doing. Stop judging, criticizing, and tearing down people around you. Our goal is to build people up. When people walk into our church, they feel torn down. They feel judged. We have to build them up. The big picture is we have to build them up. Are you building anybody up? Are you building anyone up at your work, at your family? Are you building anyone up in your church, in your community? We need to stop the bickering and the complaining. Just serve each other. Serve each other. Stop talking about what they are doing wrong. Stop complaining about what's going on wrong. Just start serving them as a servant leader. That's the big picture. So what's needed? Let's take together. The new approach is needed. Number one is what? Let's take together need to be less concerned on what I get out of it, but what I can put into it. You guys get that? A servant leader knows I have to put, not get. 
Are you coming to church or to God or to whatever to get something? No, you have to put something. You have to give something. You have to offer something. That's a servant leader. What are you giving? What are you offering? What are you putting in? Are you taking from the bucket or give putting in the bucket? Which one? Which one are you doing? Are you taking from the bucket or putting in the bucket? Which one? You should come and put in the bucket. I said this in one of the marriage seminars. You know what a bucket is, right? If we put in the bucket, after a while the bucket's going to be what? Full. And then it's going to what after a while? Overflow. So you don't have to get anything out of the bucket. When you keep putting in, it overflows. You don't have to take it. It automatically comes out. Do you guys get it? That's a servant leader. He knows that I have to keep putting in the bucket. I have to keep giving. I don't have to keep take things out. I don't have to look for my benefit. Be less concerned with your benefit. Number two, less concerned with our rights. No, this I deserve that. And more concerned with our responsibility. We have responsibility, guys, and we're always working on talking about our rights. People, people offended me. People cheated me. People hurt me. Okay, I understand it's hard. Let's say, but let's be more concerned. I'm responsible for others. The mind of Christ. And the big picture is about others. Not about me, my, mine. But the last one, encourage and build each other. Not tear down and be critical. Please. Like I said, forgive me if I ever tore down or was critical to any one of you. But this is the approach. This is the goal. This is why we're here today. Bless you. <clears throat> so that's the big picture. Here's the thing. We gotta stop saying, I want a church that has evangelism. I want a church that has 5,000 people. I want a church to teach my children hymns. I want a church that has Bible study every day. I want a church that does this. I want a church with a priest who can preach sermons, nice sermons. I want a church that can, the, the priest can preach sermons with one leg standing and visiting 15 houses and, and, and doing, juggling something. Look, guys, we've come to the point where the church is about what I can take out, not put in. If you want something for your church, you put it in. That's the servant leader. Don't ever say, I want a church that does 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 10, 11, 15, and our church doesn't do that, so I hate it. What? Servant leader is what I put in, not what I can take out. Not about my rights, not about me, my mind, but it's about others, building them, not tearing them down. I challenge you, each one of you servants, to find people to build up. That's the true servant leader. That's the big church makes them perfect in Christ. What's number one? That's the mindset. Number one is what? Are you willing to pay the price? Our Lord, St. Paul, clear. Number two, mind of Christ. What's the mind of Christ? Who remembers? Huh? Sir, but what is it? Put what? So it's two. Everyone should be what? Higher. They're first. They're interest. That's the mind of Christ. You. What do you need? You need a seat in the bus? Here, take the seat. You need this too? Here, take the seat. You need this? And we talked about the worldly and the, and the servant leader. And we talked about the difference. What's number three? To see the? What's the big picture? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, everyone is what? Perfect in Christ. But what are we doing? We're tearing each other down. We're criticizing each other. We're hurting each other. Instead of building each other up. There's a difference. If you want your church, you want your community to look a certain way, you put into it. You offer it. And God will use that. So we're looking for the servant leader who has empathy and is serving and listening to the hurts of others and looking for ways to make people higher. Last one, number four, a very important one. Rely on his power. Hey, we can't. If you want to be a servant leader, you better be relying on the power of the true servant leader, our Lord Jesus Christ. And you can get that from verse 29. Remember this verse? To this end, let's say it together. To this end, 
Does anyone get that? What is St. Paul relying on here? He's relying on the God. He is working, works, and me mightily. God is working powerfully in me. St. Paul realized to pay the price, to have the mind of Christ, to have the big picture, he has to rely on the power of God. It's God's power working on St. Paul mightily. Mightily. Can I tell you another confession? This has been a day of confessions. Okay. When I first came to Zambia in 2007, I came from one of the, 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 the probably the, one of the top churches in America at the time, which was St. Mark, D.C. And what we did there, <clears throat> and the ideas we did there, and the things we did there, it was amazing. So when I came as a young priest at 30 years old, I'm 42 by the way now, when I came as a young priest at 30 years old to you guys, I said, let me show them what we do in D.C. Let me show them how we do it in America. Right? Let me show you what's going to happen. And what happened? Year one, two, and three, is I fell right on my face and failed. Because I forgot this one. I was relying as a servant leader for you on my own strength, and my own words, and my own ideas, on my achievements from the past, that I would bring that to you. I failed. Mightily failed because I wasn't relying on a mighty God. And I was coming in with zeal and energy, and boom, it felt like a failure. It felt like going back home. Maybe some of you don't know that. I said, this is not my place. Let me go back to D.C. where I belong. Thank God I, God woke me up after three years. I don't know why it took so long. I'm hard-headed maybe. But after three years, I realized, God, I'm coming to you. I need you to help me. I want to serve you, but I can't serve you. I don't want, and sometimes I don't even want to serve the people. So, God, give me strength. Give me humility. Give me all the things I need. Give me wisdom. How to serve your people. And I started to finally get this verse. I'm laboring, but it's because God's working in me mightily. It's God's power working mightily. Another verse you guys may know very well, and you memorize this. Before we get that verse, let's say this together. One lead, let's say together. One leads by dictate and power, and the other by serving. Again, the difference between a servant leader and a, and a normal leader. Next one. One emphasizes profit. The other, people. Someone wants profit and benefit, the other one is about people. Number three. One says only the strong survive. The other says the strong help others to survive. We're supposed to help others survive, guys. Next one. One focuses on my rights and the other my responsibilities. I told you that only. Again, one is through intimidation and power, and the other is through love. There's a huge difference between a servant leader and a leader in this world. Let's open up our Bibles on Philippians 4.13. Some of you don't need to open your Bibles. You know the verse. Philippians 4.13 says what? Who remembers? Philippians 4.13 says, I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We say that verse so often, but we never practice it. Let's say it one more time, all together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Relying on God's power. Now we have four key points to be a servant leader. What's number one? Number one is what? Yeah, all together, number one. Are you willing to struggle, be uncomfortable, to be agitated, to be whatever, for the sake of somebody else? You have less, but others have more. At the end, don't worry, God's taking care of you. Number two is what? What's the mind of Christ? Others are higher, Philippians 2. What's number three? All together, number three. What's the big picture? Hmm? Yeah, others are perfect in Christ. Number four, very important one. Rely on this power. I told you my mistakes. It's clear that in Philippians 4.13, we need to do all things through Christ. 
You can't be a leader in your family, or at work, or in the church, unless you have these qualities. Sorry to tell you. You'll be failing at home. You'll be failing at work. You'll be failing in the church. It'll be just like uh, you're going through the motions. But this is what God really needs from each one of us. Don't waste energy around you complaining. Don't waste energy around you tearing people down or complaining or saying what is not there. You put in what needs to be there. You offer your time, your energy, your money, your life for God. You do that. You put into the bucket, a lot of things are going to come out. Can I tell you a funny story that happened in America that I discovered? That story. When I was in America, this is a true story. I know it's going to be hard to believe this story, but it's a true story, okay? Don't be shocked when I tell you this. I made eggs for my family. That's for me. That's for me. That's for me. I made eggs. I know. Okay, you're probably saying, what are you talking about, Abuna? Now, here's the thing. If you know about me is that I don't even go to the kitchen unless there's food ready for me. I wait for Mama Dahlia or someone else to make food. I know it's bad. But something I discovered for the first time in this last trip to America is that I can make some pretty good eggs. I'm telling you. Ask Mama Dahlia. She asked me how did I do that. I said, you know. <laughs> so, I discovered even my brother and sister, they said, these are great eggs. My mom and dad said, hey, can you make these again? So every day I was in the kitchen making some eggs. And I, I started thinking about it. I said, why haven't I done this before? Why haven't I made my wife breakfast? Why haven't I, why, why haven't I served my parents when they served me all their life? Why didn't I take care of my brother and sister? Why didn't I do that? Because I was a priest, and the priest could sit in the corner and wait for someone to bring food? I don't want to do that anymore. Don't you ever bring me food anymore. I'm going to serve you. And I had great joy in making eggs every morning for my family. And it's pretty good eggs. If anybody wants to come over for breakfast anytime, I can make some really good eggs. But I learned something. And that's what it means to serve. Forget that you're a priest or deacon or servant or you're the boss or you're someone big. Forget that. Remove that from your mind. Go and serve your children. Go and serve your wife or husband. Go and do something creative to them. Go and serve your church, the people in your class. Go and be creative how to be a servant leader. Go down and put them up. That's what it means to be a servant leader. You have to be willing to pay the price. You have to have the mind of Christ, not the worldly mind, 